Last week, we talked about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, the most popular test in America. In your WellCast worksheet, you figured out what personality type you were. Extroverted! Sensing. Feeling. This week, we're going to show you how to work with your own personality to be more productive and happier. Take out your WellCast worksheet. We're going to break down your personality letter by letter. So let's get to stepping. Step one, E or I. As you recall, the first letter corresponds to whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. If you scored as an extrovert, your learning style is probably social. So what do you do to study better? First of all, get proactive and form a study group before important tests or papers. You'll be more inclined to study if you're surrounded by people. Extrovert heaven! You'll also learn the material better if you can practice by teaching it to others. Because extroverts parse through information best by thinking it out loud. Don't worry, introverts. We haven't forgotten about you. In your case, encourage your analytical side to come out. You'll be more interested in what you're studying and do better in the long run. Use forms of note-taking that allow you to stretch your legs. Intellectually speaking, of course. Go over your class notes and make information webs, where you draw out your notes, showing the relationships between different ideas. Step two, S or N. The second letter stands for sensing or intuition. Remember, sensors are detail and fact-oriented, whereas intuitive people see the bigger picture. If you're a classic S, you learn best when material is organized into simple, easy-to-follow structures. One of these structures is the conclusion evidence method, explained in our note-taking episode. This studying technique will help you organize your thoughts into a series of questions, facts, and evidence for these facts. Now, if you're an eye for intuition, you're probably more analytically minded. You're less interested in the what and more interested in the why. In this case, try a method suggested by our viewer, Nakila55, Cornell note-taking. This is a good way to start formulating questions about the material as you're learning it. On the right, write down the facts and information that you're learning from a lecture. On the left, start writing down questions you have about the material. But who actually framed Roger Rabbit and why? Step three, F or T, feeling or thinking. Do you weigh the facts objectively or go with your gut? Whether you're a thinker or a feeler will affect how you interact with your classmates. So this is especially important if you're put into any group projects. Feelers, Georgia State's university's education program has these suggestions. One of your positive traits as a feeler is the capacity to be a peacekeeper and great leader. If you're working on a collaborative project, encourage equal participation from all group members and draw out others to express their ideas. Because, let's be honest, you're less goal-oriented, you'll have to work harder to stay on task. One way to do this is to set objectives for the group meetings and do your best to stick to them. And thinkers, your penchant for logical decisions will help your group stay on task. Uh, on the other hand, be careful that you don't disregard the importance of, say, getting along. Believe us, it's a lot easier to finish that group project if you're not at each other's throats. Step four, P or J. If you're a perceiver, you're just more adaptable. Your mantra is, eh, let's see what happens. If you're a judger, you're a lot more comfortable with a rigid schedule. Well, perceivers, here's what you're great at. Thinking outside the box, researching and gathering information. Unfortunately, you're not always the best with deadlines. So try to counter this by dividing a project into a series of small deadlines that you need to hold yourself to. Judgers, you might even turn that paper in early. On the other hand, it might be more difficult for you to test the boundaries of what you're assigned. GSU recommends second look reading. Say you're coming up with a thesis paper. After you've decided what you're going to write, try playing devil's advocate. Write down ideas that question the points you've decided on and try to poke holes in your arguments. Ultimately, this will strengthen your work. <sighs> this ENFP is tired. Let's recap. 
Last week, you learned about the Myers-Briggs personality test and found out what your unique four-letter personality indicator was. This week, we talked about how knowing your Myers-Briggs type can actually help you be more self-aware at school, be more productive, and interact better with others. So whether you're an ENSP or an INTJ or anything in between, you're now better equipped to get the most out of yourself. Tweet us at WatchWellCast, email us at WatchWellCast at gmail.com, or leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.